So the Department of Justice decided to hand down these emergency regulations attached to Senate Bill 2. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel today. We've seen some emergency regulations that look like they're going to be proposed by the Department of Justice. We are here to talk about them today. To do that, we have brought on a partner at Michelle and Associates. He's the brain behind the California Gun Laws book that everybody seems to want these days. Matt Cabero. Matt, thank you for being on with us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. But before we get into that today, guys, please make sure and like, share, and subscribe to this channel. It's really helping with the algorithms. We're looking to reach as many people as we can, especially with this video, because when it comes time to comment, we're going to have to get our comments into the Department of Justice in a timely fashion. So please hit that like, share, or subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so that you get notified when we come out with new content. So Matt, um, I don't necessarily want to jump right into these regulations because uh, we haven't talked about this process on the channel before. You know, we talk a lot about legislation uh, and and we've we've gone through the steps of how legislation can be passed. But this isn't coming to us necessarily from Sacramento. These are regulations that are being handed down by the Department of Justice. We're looking for them to be posted on the Office of Administrative Laws website. Can you just go ahead and walk us through this process and I mean, what are these regulations? Are these are these uh, do these ultimately become California law? How does this process actually work? Sure. So the provisions of Senate Bill 2 gave authority to the Department of Justice to adopt regulations in certain contexts. Uh, and this recent proposal from the Department of Justice uh, is, you know, it, their attempt, I should say, at, at adopting those regulations. As, as far as the process is concerned, uh, they've adopted, they're seeking to adopt what are called emergency regulations, which have a much shorter uh, time period from their initial proposal to the actual implementation, provided that they satisfy certain California government code uh, rules and, and procedures uh, under what's called the Administrative Procedures Act. And the agency in the state of California that ensures that state agencies like the California Department of Justice follow those procedures. It's called the Office of Administrative Law. And so you, you can, if your viewers are interested, they can just Google uh, OAL and they should be able to find uh, the actual agency's website. And on that website, they sort of lay out what those procedures are, what those requirements are. And here, because this is an emergency regulatory proposal, OAL has a special section on their website regarding uh, emergency proposals that have been submitted to them. And typically, as soon as those proposals are formally submitted to the Office of Administrative Law, that's when that comment period will begin. And so as it stands right now for this particular proposal, we've been checking periodically. I just checked just before we, we got on this video here. Uh, that proposal, from everything that I can tell, has not been officially submitted to the OAL's website yet. I was expecting them to be submitted last week, but we haven't seen them yet. Seen that happen yet. So uh, everything is indicating right now that there is uh, there's still time to submit comments on the proposal, and that official five day window for emergency regulatory proposals that you have to comment has not yet ended yet because it hasn't even started yet. So. Uh, when the Department of Justice uh, will actually submit this package to the OAL formally is kind of anyone's guess at the moment. The post on DOJ's website suggests that it was going to be at least five days after their initial notice, which happened on December 8th. Uh, we're now on December 18th, so that was about 10 days ago, of course. So we're still waiting to see when this will actually get uh, proposed officially from the DOJ. And then, like I said, from that point, there will be five comment days to submit comments to the DOJ and the OAL on the proposal. Now, typically with emergency rulemaking actions like this, what you will often see is that unless the comments raise uh, serious issues or uh, the OAL has has problems or issues with the proposal at the end of that five-day comment uh, period, those regulations will then become 
official and enforceable. And they'll be sent to the Sec Secretary of State for filing. And that's when they'll actually become official California regulations uh, on the book. They, they do have a limited time frame from once they're adopted to, uh, at, at some point, the DOJ is going to have to adopt official formal regulations under the standard rulemaking process. But for now, once those regulations get passed, they come on the books. That means they're official and they can be enforced at that point. Okay, I, I, I want to pause you there because I do think you hit uh, two pretty big things. So first of all, and there has been a lot of chatter, you know, they, they come down with these uh, regulations that they're going to propose. Uh, they put in the top of that letter that there's a five-day window. The community gets into uh, a little bit of a frenzy, uh, but it, it is important. As of the filming of this video, they have not dropped, and correct me if I'm wrong, they haven't dropped the regs on the OAL website yet. Uh, which means there is no there's no place to comment. Um, once they drop those, the comment section will open for five days, um, and the purpose of comment is basically to what raise um, uh, to raise questions about them, to prove to the Office of Administrative Law uh, that they are not good regulations to the point where they have to uh, say that they're not they're not going to take them in? That, that's a fair way of looking at it. We've actually been successful in the past on challenging a number of DOJ regulatory proposals. Uh, the most the most recent example that I could think of off the top of my head was when the Department of Justice tried to adopt emergency regulations regarding assault weapons and the assault weapon registration periods following the changes in 2016. Uh, but if the comments are are on point enough and and catch uh, raise you know raise questions with the OAL, the OAL has in the past told DOJ no, these are not exempts or this there's a problem here or they're they're lacking authority or something along those lines. So it is definitely something that can be worthwhile, uh, particularly when you have an emergency regulation proposal like this, in the sense that there's really been no input from the stakeholders as to far as how these regulations will actually impact day-to-day -day lives of California gun owners and CCW holders and things like that, that the agency, like in this case, the Department of Justice might not really be aware of at all. And, you know, might be thinking one way and then all of a sudden you have a bunch of people that are commenting, they go, you know, okay, we may, may need to fix this. Otherwise this could, could cause serious problems kind of thing. Well, fair enough. Uh, so, so what exactly are these specific regulations honing in on? I, it was, I think, a 12-page document that they dropped. Uh, the best way that you can, can you kind of summarize what it was they were attacking with these proposed emergency regulations? Sure. And, and so there, there's really, there's, I'll sort of divide it into two sections. The, 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 the section that not a lot of people are talking about in re in reality that it, it seems more of a just sort of a clarification on what the law actually is requiring it has to do when a CCW is revoked or suspended or, or denied. SB2 creates this new court process by which an individual can appeal to their local uh, California Superior Court uh, the actual denial or suspension or revocation of a CCW application or an existing CCW license. And what the regulations are doing in that context is they're clarifying what the DOJ will do if and when, for example, a court overturns a denial or suspension. Uh, and then the DOJ has to, as part of the law, also then run a background check to make sure that there's not any issues with the person's eligibility, otherwise things like that. And so it's kind of more procedural in nature. And so it's not really something that I would say is going to have a lot of impact on everyday CCW holders. Uh, but the, the, the other aspect of these regulations that is, of course, gaining, gaining the most attention is clearly the proposals, uh, changes to what it means to be a DOJ certified instructor. And if you look at the actual language of SB2, um, I'll read it here. It specifically states that Except for the component on mental health and mental health resources, the course shall be taught and supervised by firearm instructors certified by the Department of Justice pursuant to Section 31635, comma, or in a manner prescribed by regulation. And so this, this regulatory proposal is just that, is the DOJ trying to adopt regulations regarding what it means to be uh, certified instructors in order to have the requisite sort of 
qualification or license or certification, whatever you want to call it, in order to be eligible or even able to teach a CCW course through a local issuing authority, whether it be the sheriff or chief of police. Now, the important thing to remember here is that the sheriff or chief of police still has the authority generally from everything that we can tell to determine whether or not a particular individual's course is sufficient for the uh, for the sheriff or, or chief of police to actually be able to teach the CCW class. And so what this is, is this is just sort of an extra step that those instructors have to satisfy in order to actually be able to teach the course. Their actual course that they're teaching, of course, has to still be up to snuff with, with, the, with the issuing authority. So it's kind of like just an extra license that you'll have to get. And as part of that, you're going to have to get a certificate of eligibility one way or the other. So they, they come down and basically are trying to make it harder. And, the, and you know, this is part of the attack on the second amendment community of Senate bill two, uh, but they're trying to enforce more regulations on trainers. What is this going to do to just the community of trainers uh, in California? And, and that's the biggest issue with these with these regulations is that what they what the DOJ has effectively tried to do is they've tried to say, in order to get that license, you have to be certified by one of three entities, and the first one being the Bureau of Security and Investigative Services or the BSIS, which is typically those uh, certifications for purposes of becoming an armed security guard in the state of California, so the Department of Consumer Affairs. The second one, of course, is through the post certification, either an instructor or a range master, which is the peace officer safety training standards, which is typically reserved for law enforcement. And then this third one, which is a certification from a state of California accredited school, which no one really knows what that means. Uh, and there isn't any sort of clear definition one way or another. I actually asked DOJ's attorneys, what does that actually mean? And they simply responded, these are proposed regulations, you're invited to comment. So we still don't know exactly what that means, uh, nor do, I'm, I'm not necessarily certain what DOJ is thinking with that. But the issue here is that uh, there is, those three options very heavily restrict what an individual that is not how somehow involved either in law enforcement or from a business side of things through armed security, that kind of thing, on who can actually teach the CCW course. And so if these regulations were to become effective, and this is something that uh, would be required, you would see basically overnight on January 1st, all of the current CCW training providers not having the requisite uh, ability to obtain that certification in the first place, but also not having it either. So all of a sudden, all the CCW trainers are no longer eligible to teach the required CCW training courses. And so from not only from their, you know, livelihood and their, their business side of things, this also directly impacts CCW holders and prospective CCW holders, because you won't be able to get the required renewal training nor will you be able to get the required initial training if you're submitting a CCW for the first time because there won't be any instructors that are certified to do that. And so that, that's where the biggest issue uh, with these regulations comes up is that uh, what it looks like what DOJ has done is they've either completely ignored that aspect of it or they've done so intentionally to try and limit uh, who can actually become a CCW instructor here in the state of California. Well, I guess to be fair, uh, you know, the the regime of Gavin Newsom uh, at the beginning promised to uh, delete the culture of firearms in California. This would certainly fall in line with that. Uh, he's gone after free speech and talking to minors. He, he's demonized the community. And now he's looking to take away uh, the training that we would be able to get in order to uh, actually carry a firearm to defend ourselves. So what is there to do? You know, you, you got the comment uh, period coming up. Uh, to be honest, coming into this conversation, I, I kind of had the, the thought process of we need to show force in these comment sections. But from what you're saying, it's it, it sort of sounds like uh, it's a, a good ideas win over, you know, maybe the same idea over and over and over again. Um, what 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 is CRPA doing about this and what is going to be the best way for the community to come together to fight this? So one of the problems I will say with the regulatory proposal is in the statute itself is that, as I mentioned, that 
there's this comma slash or pursuant to DOJ regulations. And so what that means is that if I read the statute as it stands, the a, a CCW instructor either needs to be certified pursuant to 31635 or via DOJ regulations. And so the question becomes, well, why would you need to go through the DOJ regulatory proposal if you can just go through the existing statutory process, which is Penal Code 31635, which means that you're just an FSC certified instructor? And so that's one of the, the issues that we're, we're, we're going to be raising uh, through a comment letter here that's been drafted and, and it's almost ready to go. One of the things that we're trying to do uh, is we're trying to, we, CRPA has reached out directly to all of the CCW instructors in the state of California uh, to the extent possible, if, if we have their contact information, of course, uh, and we're asking them to be co-signers on our comment letter here that we're going to be submitting. And so we're hoping to get as many of the existing CCW instructors that we can to actually participate uh, by basically just signing on to our letter that we're preparing that's going to raise this point and all the points that we've just sort of talked about, as well as some other key issues with how, for example, this regulatory proposal is not in line with the APA's emergency rulemaking procedures uh, and, and has very serious problems and questions that it raises that the DOJ and OAL should be aware of before simply filing them with the Secretary of State and making them official regulations here in the state of California. The one thing, too, that I want to talk about very briefly is, of course, is that we have a lawsuit challenging DOJ's uh, not DOJ's, the state of California's uh, enactment of Senate Bill 2 uh, that is coming up for a hearing here on December 20th, which is, it's currently December 18th. So on Wednesday, we have a hearing in front of uh, Judge Carney in uh, the Southern District of California that will, uh, that's our, acting as our challenge to Senate Bill 2. that has been consolidated with a couple other cases as well, challenging Senate Bill 2. So it could be, all of this becomes a moot point in the sense that if, if we are able to obtain an injunction of some type on SB2, uh, this and other aspects of Senate Bill 2 might not actually be enforceable come January 1st. So there, there we're, we're sort of attacking it on both sides. We're trying to address the regulations and the problems with the regulations, but also the underlying statutes themselves. Well, that actually sound, that, that, that's actually very promising. And yeah, when you put them together, I guess if you do get an injunction on parts of SB2 that would you know counter off to these regulations, then uh, they wouldn't be enforceable either. Uh, as far as the community, though, um, what is the rally that the community needs to do? You've got this comment period of five days. Uh, that's inevitable, right? It will come sooner or later at, so long as they get posted on the OAL website. Um, is, this a, uh, is this a let's all try to come up with as many ideas as possible? Is this a let's get a letter going uh, and get everybody to sign it? What's going to be, the in your eyes, what's going to be the most effective way for the community to rally around these comments? I mean, the short answer is that there's no wrong way to participate in any government process one way or another. I mean, being able to voice your own opinion, your own, you know, uh, position on things is important to our, you know, our system of government. And so the, the bottom line is that I would encourage anyone and everyone that is either involved as a stakeholder, whether they have a CCW uh, instruction business, or they're thinking about becoming one, or they're just a CCW holder, or thinking about getting the CCW, you know, these regulations will affect you, uh, gun owners, generally speaking. And so it's important to, to, to comment and participate in that process, just as much as it's important to vote, just as much as it's important to, you know, pay attention to political issues and things like that. So um, to the, to the extent possible, I always encourage everyone and everyone that they can to submit comments. And if you're unsure about how to do that, the CRPA has already posted a brief, you know, description of the process. And of course, when we actually submit our comment letter, we'll post that and give you guys some additional information. And that might give you some ideas on what to comment yourselves, things like that. So it's always just, you know, my general advice is to, you know, subscribe to the CRPA, make sure that you're getting the email alerts, things like that. And that's the best way to stay informed. Well, we're certainly going to be following along. Jacob, why don't you go ahead and put the link uh, to that right in the comments uh, or the description below. 
Uh, any final thoughts on this, Matt? Uh, you know, you know, uh, do you expect these to get dropped before the first of the year or with the holidays coming up? Is that the perfect time for them to drop it? Maybe when nobody's paying attention, what's the outlook for this look like so far? We, we've seen DOJ, unfortunately, drop a lot of regulations around the holidays, but what, whether that's the, by design or not, I mean, you know, you have the legislative session that just came to an end recently. And so, of course, DOJ has been uh, dealing with their own version of of trying to get all the laws and everything you know put together, so to speak. So uh, it is something that we deal with on a yearly basis, unfortunately. And and like I said, it's just important that everyone you know. And I know it's the holidays, but you know, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you stay informed, and make sure you participate. And you know, join your local chapter. Join you know, I run the chapter up here in in San Jose, Santa Clara. If you guys are interested, feel free to come on out and join us. We meet first. Uh, First Saturday of every month, generally. Go to the CRPA's website if you're not in the area, and there will probably be a chapter in your area if there if there if there is. And if there isn't, you know, maybe look about potentially starting your own and going from there. Well, I certainly appreciate you being here. I appreciate all the work that you do. the The California Gun Laws book uh, is is a great tool for uh, that. So many of us use. Uh, hopefully this doesn't get added to it for next year, but uh, as this continues to progress, we're certainly going to follow along with it. Matt, thank you very much for being here and sharing today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And as always, guys, please, if you like this content and you want it to get shared, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell so that when we come out with new content, you get notified as quickly as possible. It's really going to help as the community uh, starts participating in this comment period specifically for this. We're going to need as many eyes and ears on it as possible. So go ahead and do that. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.